Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs here with Got That Funk. Uh, this is a video response of sorts to my friend Robert Wallace, who did a video that I watched this morning called More on the War on, P on the Poor, Facebook Edition where Bob had come across a posting on Facebook which had more than 50,000 likes, um, which was ostensibly written originally by a 21-year-old Texan woman back in 2011. Now, Robert, in his video, uh, mentions that he doubts that the woman in the picture that he used was the same person who wrote the post, but it's neither here nor there because in Robert's video, he deconstructs the points that she was making and doesn't attack the person. And I'm going to link Bob's video in the description box below. It's a bit lengthy. It's like 16 or 17 minutes long, but it's well worth it. But in her commentary, uh, she says, you know, put me in charge of food stamps. And she'll sort the food stamp situation out and describes how. Or put me in charge of housing. And she talks about how she'd sort the housing problem out for the poor and the employment problem out for the poor and so on. And, you know, that's the kind of game that we've probably all played at one point or another in our lives. You know, make me king for the day and I'll sort this whole planet out. Well, you know, um, that's a game I'd like to encourage us all to play right now. And let me go first, okay? Or second, since this woman apparently went first uh, in this conversation. Um, because I agree with Robert Wallace insofar as everything she said is tantamount to a war against the poor. And I find it ironic and amusing that when people, whether or not they're of a conservative bent, uh, make comments basically denigrating poor people for being poor, even if it's not their fault that they're poor, um, those people don't get accused of being class warriors. But if someone like Robert or myself uh, says that we should tax the fuck out of the rich, we get accused of class envy, of being class warriors, and so forth. So if I'm going to be labeled such, I might as well wear it as a badge of pride. And here's what I would do if I was king for a day. Put me in charge and find out uh, whether or not the uh, suggestions that I have would improve the lives of the masses or otherwise. <clears throat> First of all, I recognize, and I should stay out loud, this is a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing, and whilst my suggestions are based from a serious point of view, they're not necessarily uh, comprehensive or well thought out, and there would certainly have to be a, some kind of transitioning phase between the status quo and the kind of suggestions that I'm making. You couldn't just flip a switch and change everything the way I'm talking about overnight and expect there to be anything other than chaos. So yeah, there would have to be a sort of transitional phase from the model we currently uh, um, live under <clears throat> to the one I'm espousing. But uh, it's no secret to anybody who's watched my channel for any length of time that I've got a lot of sympathy, philosophically speaking, with democratic socialism as a, as a socialist model for society. And um, that being so, there are certain changes to the status quo that I would make, um, which would probably be seen as an attack on the rich. I can't help that um, because I have been poor and the thing is I think an awful lot of people who've never been poor really lack empathy to the point where it's disgusting to me frankly um, you shouldn't need to be something to have sympathy for that thing you know uh, similarity is not required for the exercise of compassion but when I was poorest was when I was a single parent I was living here in the UK just like I am now. My children, when I became a single parent, were two years old and three years old, respectively. And uh, I was unemployed at that time. So I was reliant on state benefits as a foreigner. Okay, so you can imagine that didn't make me very popular with an awful lot of people, especially media pundits and so forth, who had both barrels pointed at me. I was a single parent and a foreigner on benefits. Nevertheless, if it weren't for those benefits, I would not have been able to raise my kids. I suppose social services would have had to come and take them away from me, and my kids would have been put into foster care, which to me seems to be likely to be more expensive on the taxpayer than having me raise my own kids on meager benefits that barely cover living expenses. So yeah, I'm acquainted with what it's like being reliant on government benefits. I'm acquainted with what it's like to be very poor, um, to literally not even be sure if you can feed your kids, and so forth. Um, and that does give me a lot of sympathy for the plight of people in poverty. And I understand very well that there is such a thing as a poverty trap. So what would I do to uh, el eliminate this? Um, well, there's loads of things. And if I get accused of being a class warrior or hating the rich, so be it. 
because it is my opinion that the rich don't pay enough taxation and that the poor and middle income earners pay too much. So I've got a few suggestions about taxation that I'm going to talk about first because I would completely do away with tax codes as they are right now and reinstate taxation thus. Anybody who makes less than $100,000 a year would be completely taken out of the income tax category. So yeah, if you make less than $100,001 a year, you wouldn't have to pay any tax at all. At least no income tax, I should put it that way. People who make over $100,001 a year would pay 10% of everything above $100,000 a year in income tax. And that 10% would be immune from any deductions. There would be no loopholes. You have to pay the 10% flat out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no mitigation against the 10%. The same is true for the next tax bracket. It would jump from 100000 to 500000 a year, and everybody who made 500000 or more a year would have to pay 25% of everything above 500000 that they make. Okay? So far, so good. You with me still? Great. People who make six figures a year, sorry, seven figures a year, which is over a million dollars a year, would have to pay 75% of everything over a million dollars a year in taxation. And anybody who makes eight figures a year, 10 million a year or more, would have to pay 90% of what they make above 10 million a year in taxation. So those people would still be fabulously wealthy compared to the rest of the population. They would be taxed punitively, I think, by any sort of honest analysis, 90% is a punitive tax rate. And it's not necessarily punishment for being rich. It's a fair contribution for being in a system that allows you, enables you to get that rich in the first place. So that's how I would handle income tax. All the tax brackets would be completely without loopholes. There would be no loopholes at all whatsoever. If you earn that money in the United States, you pay that money in the United States. End of story. No deductions uh, could be applied against your income, and there would be no loopholes that you could jump through to get out of paying taxes. I would also, <clears throat> as a favor to people uh, who are more affluent in a way, and also because I just think it's fair, um, I would completely do away with capital gains tax. I would completely do away with inheritance tax. Um, and you're probably sitting there thinking, well, you know, that's not going to be enough money in taxation to pay for all the programs that we have already, much less any new programs that you might want to suggest, Paul. So what are we going to do about that? Well, here's what we would do. Because it's important that everybody contributes to society by a taxation in one way or another. And people making over a hundred grand a year would contribute via income tax, but people under hundred grand a year would contribute by paying sales tax. And I would make the sales tax pretty high. I reckon one third of the retail cost of goods and services would be taxation. So that's how people on the lower economic end of the spectrum would contribute to the society that they live in by taxing their consumption. So it's really simple. The less you spend, the less tax you pay. The more you spend, the more tax you pay. The more expensive the things are that you buy, the more taxation you're going to be paying as well. So people who are paying you know, luxury items, uh, for example, um, goods and services, would be paying more tax as well. So, you know, you could, uh, on, if you're in a, of a lower income bracket, you could more or less control the amount of taxation that you pay based on your consumption. So that's how I would sort taxation out. Now, there are some other policies that I would promote if I was king for a day. Um, and one of those would be that we would have free health care at the point of delivery. Health care would be paid for out of taxation. I would basically not nationalize health care, but health care would be provided by the states. And the same is true for distribution of power and distribution of water resources. I would um, effectively nationalize these things, but instead of making it sort of a federal nation, it would be nationalized on the state level. And states would own a either controlling interest of say 60% or more of power generation and you know water distribution um, and also the um, the profit motive would be completely taken out of healthcare it would be completely taken out of power generation and water distribution because I don't think it's appropriate to profit from those industries in particular um, 
these are basic requirements that we all have to function in our society and they should be as close to free as possible. Now I'm not saying power and water should be free, not by any means. We should still charge for those things, of course. But I'm wanting to take profit out of it. Any money that is accrued um, by charging customers, which is greater than the cost of operating the companies in question, would be reinvested back into the companies to improve services and make sure that uh, things are running smoothly. And uh, all of this would be paid for uh, via the taxation that I mentioned earlier. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I'm in favor of a sort of socialist model, but socialism, uh, total socialism, no, not at all. But a form of socialism which I think would benefit the many and disadvantage very few. Now again, I want to stress there would have to be a transitional process. Uh, you couldn't just go from the status quo to what I'm talking about without being without chaos ensuing. I recognize that. And here's a few more suggestions while I'm at it. I would dial back our military spending dramatically. Um, it's well rehearsed that the United States spends more on its military budget than the next 50 countries combined. And the fact is that we are unlikely to suffer any existential threat from any other nation state. Uh, simply due to the fact that we possess nuclear weapons and have shown ourselves willing to use those nuclear weapons if we think it's necessary for our existence. Um, so, you know, that being the case, we could dial back our military significantly. We've got military bases in literally dozens and dozens of other countries. Some countries have several bases of ours, like the UK or Italy, for example. And we could easily dial that back. And, uh, you know, we've got plenty of resources in our military to extend our hand around the world if it should become necessary. But I'm against my country being some sort of global policeman. And uh, I really, uh, I also have sort of protectionist leanings when it comes to uh, imports and taxation. I think we should do whatever it takes to encourage manufacturing jobs to be in our own domestic economy. Because as far as I can tell, when I look back over the history of the Industrial Revolution, it's the countries that are producing manufacturing things that prosper. And I don't think a country can really prosper if it's based solely on consumption, which is the model that is currently in practice in America. Yes, of course, we still produce things, but our production base has been more or less completely wiped out. I would also um, regulate uh, to such a degree that, uh, you know, media interests and so forth are not owned by foreign companies and foreign interests. Um, because I think it's in our interest to protect our domestic economy from not, such, not, not so much existential threats from the outside, but from outside interests profiteering at our expense. Um, we should be profiting from our own endeavors first and, you know, offshore profits should be secondary to those concerns. That's just my opinion. So yeah, I'm a libertarian socialist. Uh, if you want to put a label on my sort of philosophy, that's one which is closest to how I see things. And these suggestions are basically the starting point to what I would do if you put me in charge and made me king for the day. Now I'm sure most of you wouldn't want me to be king for the day, and frankly I wouldn't either because I don't agree with monarchy. I agree with democracy. I agree with government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But sometimes um, elective democracy doesn't necessarily produce the best results because people have to campaign. Uh, campaign requires contributions and contributions require a quid pro quo. That's just the reality of it and we've all seen that. Our government is far too corrupt and so another thing I would do to sort of solve the situation that we find ourselves in now is to have a an aspect of elective democracy but one of the houses of congress would be elective and one of the houses of congress would be selective people would do um, public service in the same way that they're selected for jury duty now they would do legislative duty i think public service is should be incumbent on the population this is not to say that uh, i think we should reinstate the draft and so forth um, but I do think that people should be encouraged to contribute in whatever way they can. And whether that's serving at, in, in some you know, capacity on the local level, the state level, or the federal level, 
we should all be encouraged to participate in our democracy directly by being members of it. So yeah, everybody could be selected at some point in their life to serve in one of those realms. At some point, you do two or three years public service, and that's it. You've paid your admission price to society. And it doesn't have to be when you're young. It could be when you're old. In fact, I would think it would be prudent to try and come up with a process which randomly selected a legislative body uh, which was more or less demogra demographically uh, reflective of the society in question. And I think that could all be done randomly uh, with computers using certain algorithms. I don't necessarily think it would propose uh, impose such a difficult, um, overwhelming problem. And you might say, well, we're going to have a lot of ig ignorant people, um, you know, coming up with stupid ideas for legislation and so forth. Well, you know, if you really believe in a, a government of the people and by the people and for the people, you have to put the people in charge. And professional politicians, as we've seen in our elective democracy, are far too open to corruption. So we would still have that aspect of it, but we would, could do away completely with the uh, campaign funding as it, as it exists now and fund campaigning in a different way, uh, possibly from the public purse or other means. There are more creative ways than just relying on billionaire donors and corporate donors and so forth to get our politicians the jobs that they have um, because they quite evidently end up serving the interests of the people who paid for their election rather than the voters who actually did the electing. So that's my two cents. Uh, selective democracy in conjunction with elective democracy. I don't think one should be outed completely, um, but I think both need to be sort of harmonized in some fashion. These are just ideas off the top of my head. Like I said, don't take them too seriously, but let's talk about it. How would you fix the country? How would you fix the world if someone put you in charge? I'd be interested to know. So feel free to shred my ideas in the comment section. I can totally take it. And if you want to elaborate or ask me any questions, that's what we're here for. I'm all about the conversation. I want to thank you for watching this video. I look forward to any video responses or commentary that I might get. And until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.